that the Bronx Bombers would be the cure-all for a 10-game losing streak? Well, amid all the hoopla surrounding A-Rod, the good guys have put together two complete team victories. And tonight, our Southsiders try and sweep the 27-time world champions right out of Chicago. It's the Sox and the Yankees next. We are coming to you from the city beautiful Chicago, Illinois, where tonight Comcast Sportsnet presents White Sox baseball. Paul Canerco, Alex Reels, Gordon Beckham in the Sox as they get set to put heads with Robinson Cano, Alex Rodriguez, and the 27-time world champion, New York Yankees. Hi, everybody, and welcome. With Steve Stone, I'm Ken Harrelson. As we get set to bring you the finale of this three-game set. As you know, we've taken the first two. We won the opener 8-1. to one. Jose Quintana was just outstanding. Then last night, Chris Sale battled hard. We won that ball game 3-2. to two. So coming off a 10-game losing streak and all of a sudden take the first two from these guys, not all bad. This series started out like a circus with Alex Rodriguez as the ringmaster, but it's turned into a two-game winning streak largely because the guys are hitting the baseball. They're stopping the opponents from hitting the baseball. As you can see, the starters have done a brilliant job. Hits per game, well, radically different. 12 as far as 7.4. So everything is starting to click. And hopefully tonight they can make it a three-game winning streak. And a couple of left-handers out on that bump. A couple of very good left-handers pitching tonight. But a couple of guys that aren't faring very well. CC Sabathia really struggling over the last three starts. They've just killed him. However, career-wise against our ball club, 18-4. and four, So he's been close to unbeatable. As far as Hector Santiago, he's had a tough time, but he's throwing the ball well. In fact, his ERA for the year is a point and a half lower than the big man from New York. Hopefully Hector can have a good one tonight, and it could be the last time we get a chance to see Mariano Rivera. Maybe the greatest that ever lived at coming into the game and closing it down with... 643 saves. You see the opponent's batting average, the games he's pitched in. This is a rare gem. The last active player to ever wear number 42. A man who will be enshrined in the Hall of Fame exactly five years after he's eligible. And we hope he doesn't get in the game tonight because if he does, it's a safe situation. That being said, be nice to see him one more time, maybe pitching the seventh. Let's just watch him on the hot okay. All right, sit back, relax, and strap it down. White Sox baseball coming your way.
Brought to you in part by your Chicago area and Northwest Indiana Lexus dealer, who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, through it all. AT&T U-verse. Visit att.com slash free your TV. We think possible. And by Ford. Check out America's freshest lineup at your local Ford store or at localfordstores.com. Welcome back to beautiful U.S. Cellular Field. And let's take a look at how Joe Girardi's going to line up his Yankees tonight. It's going to be Gardner, Soriano, and Rodriguez at the top with Cano, Wells, and Granderson in the middle. Nunez, Overbay, and Romine round it out. The defense and how they'll line up behind Santiago. Wells, Diaz, and Rios in the outfield with Gillespie, Ramirez, Beckham, and Canerco in the infield. Tyler Flowers with a nod behind the plate. And our Lexus pursuing perfection starting pitcher is Hector Santiago. On for his 16th start of the year. The umpires for the game tonight. There you see him. Gibson, Lane, Wendelstead, and Porter. So we're ready to play baseball. I'm ready to turn it over to my play-by-play -play partner, Ken Harrelson. Hi, Stevie. Thank you. And once again, good evening, everyone, and welcome to White Sox Baseball right here on Comcast Sportsnet. So happy you could join us. And the first pitch of the ball game, there's the bunt. That's a good bunt. Good bunt. It's a great idea, and the execution was perfect because left-handers almost always fall off the mound to the third base side. So if you get this bunt by the pitcher, and Santiago is a very good fielder, the bunt's just in a perfect spot. There's no chance at all for Beckham because of the speed of Gardner. He does everything he can do, but can't get it there in time. So now you got a base stealer on. He is 18 for 25 in that category, and here's Soriano hitting at 211. A homer he's driven in four. Yankees come in hitting at 240 as a team with a 3.76 ERA. Soriano one for eight in the first two games. And that pitch is high and wide. These two teams met last year seven times. Sox won five. This year we met them twice and prevailed twice. Oh yeah. Pull the string, had him way out in front. Good off speed pitch. He threw it down, which is where Soriano likes it. That being said, he certainly didn't like the 79 mile an hour velocity. Alfield shading him to the left, gap out there in right center. Just a decent lead, and there's the 1 1, and it is 2 0 Yankees. Second home run, Soriano is hit as a Yankee, he's now driven in six, and just like that, it's an early lead for the Bronx Bombers. This is a no doubter. And the problem was two change ups or screw balls in a row. And this one stayed up. Our Ford home run replay. It's a bomb. And an early lead. So here's Rodriguez. He's two for six in the series. Takes that first pitch fastball strike. Alex has faced Santiago one time. He's 0 for 1. And here at the ballpark, 330 down the left field line, 335 down the right field line, 375 in the gaps, and 400 straight away center. Right approach, just underneath it. Thank goodness. And that's out number one. So that'll bring up the cleanup hitter, the second baseman, Robinson Cano, who's two for six in the series. Robinson hitting at 288. 21 homers and 70 knocked in, which Steve and I have both 
commented on. Really somewhat remarkable with the protection that he's had. Which is almost none. And with left handers, he usually tries to take him to left and left center field. Casper Wells well off the line in left. And Alejandro Diaz is straight away in center. Well, since the All Star break, to show you what those numbers do, he's only hitting 210 with no home runs. So it'll tell you that people stop pitching to him. But he still has 21 long ones and 70 knocked in. Well, you can't blame him with the lineups they've been running out there. It's been something that we haven't seen since back in the 65, 6, 7, 8, and 9 in that era back in those days when they were running out similar lineups that they're doing now. There's a look year. at Joe Giretti. Had to talk with him before the game today. He said it's it's frustrating, but there's not much you can do. It is what it is. The heart of his team has been injured. Yeah. And if you can't put him on the field, you can't get any production. Breaking ball. Well, they've got a good manager, and they certainly have a terrific general manager, Brian Cash. There's a lot of folks that are talking about Girardi because this is the last year of his contract, saying, well, will he be the fall guy? And my answer to them is, if he is the fall guy, he will stay unemployed exactly as long as he wants to be because somebody will pick him up. He's a terrific manager. Yes, he is. None of what's happened this year has been the fault of Joe Girardi. And or he won't be the fall guy in Brian Cashman's eyes. If he's going to be a fall guy, it'll be in the Steinbrenner's eyes. And in that respect, they had, they had a good teacher. Well, indeed, George did not like managers. Wells pops it up, but the bunt, the beautiful bunt by Gardner, and then a long home run by Soriano after a half inning of play. It's their guys, too, and our guys coming to bat. Off with Diazza and Rios at the top, and Canerco, Beckham, and Vicieto in the middle with Wells, Gillespie, and Tyler Flowers rounding it out. The defense, and now they line up behind the big man, CC Sabathia, Soriano, Gardner, and Granderson in the outfield with Rodriguez, Nunez, Cano, and Overbay in the infield. Austin Romine behind the plate, and our Lexus pursuing perfection starting pitcher is CC Sabathia. Hard to believe, 9 and 10. Even harder to believe, the ERA at 478. Yet lifetime against our ball club, 18 and 4, and he's spotted to an early lead. And before we show you our picks to click, you at home select yours, as here is Alexei hitting at 283, a homer. He's driven in 29. So the 33 year old veteran Southpaw. First ball hunting pops it up. Alexei's had good success against CC. Now 10 for 24. And very quickly, let's check out our picks to click. 
DiMaggio, crew, went with Casper Well. Steve's going with Rios. Bill Waters, Chris Taylor, John Stortz, Mallory Whitlock, Kathy Bingham, Tina Stack, Nancy Trump, Christy Connors, Terry Constantine, and I. We're going to go with Gordon Beckham. Over Bay in very close at first, as is Rodriguez at third. First pitch strike. Once again, Alejandro fouls one off his anatomy, which happens quite a bit. Talk to Joe Girardi about the problem with Sabathia. And he says it's been very simple, and even Larry Rothschild, the pitching coach, can't figure out just exactly what he's doing, but his changeup and his sinker, instead of going into the left hander and away from the right hander, they're both cutting. They're both going into the right hander, and it's made it very difficult for him to get people out on what used to be a pretty good change. That's into left field. Toriano going back. He's there. He made he made really some good defensive plays in this series in the first two games. That's out number two. But you know, I was listening to Larry Bowe and Billy Ripken prior to the game today, and Bowe came out with I, I'm just looking at it. That's the reason Jim Angio given us a shot. He's lost a lot of weight. Sabathia. Look how thin he is in the face and the neck. And I agree with Larry. Boy. Yeah, Cooperstown is filled with guys who were big. Heavy set guys who are strong. It looks to me like he has lost a whole bunch of weight. So here's Rios. I tell you, I saw it happen with my former roommate Frank Howard, Gil Hodges. We finished up the season one year, he was 303, 36 inch waist. Hodges said, You're going to come in. Is that foul back? He said, You're going to come in at 275, or I'm going to find you $100 for every pound you're over 275. Now, $100 back in those days. A lot of money. Yeah. Even well, he for came Big in, Frank. He came in at 275. He was weak. And he played that way for about three weeks, finally. Because that is into center field. And this didn't take long. One, two, three, three fly balls. And after one, it's 2 nothing Yankees. Two seventy-five and Stony. He was. You, you wouldn't think a man was six eight two seventy-five would be weak. He was weak. And then finally, after about three weeks, he struck out four times in one game. And we were rooming together. He says, "Rooming, come on, let's go. I've had enough of this BS." <laughs> you can't believe. It's one of those things you had to see to believe how much he, he ate from after that game until about one thirty or two o'clock in the morning. And eventually, I assume he got his stroke back. He got his strength back. But no, just because he was 6'8, 275, he just, it wasn't him. 
And that might be what's been the problem with CeCe. Well, I know at a lot of points in his career, he was well over three bills. Oh, yeah. They, uh, I heard that when he signed with the Yankees, he was at 330. Granderson is saying that the pitch hit him. Take a look at it. Couldn't tell right there. From that angle, look, if anything, it hit the bat. Yeah, it hit the bat. It certainly looked like it hit the knob of the bat. So the count one and two. Greg Gibson's going to win this one as Girardi goes walking back. Well, that was just a perfunctory appearance by Joe out there. Yeah. Do anything to stop the rhythm of Santiago. Two and two. Pretty good rip at that one underneath it. It's always been the case in baseball, especially. If you're performing, it really doesn't matter what you weigh. Exactly. The only time you're too fat is when you're either not hitting or not pitching. Exactly and right. The greatest example, or one of the great examples, was former Cub pitcher Rick Russell, who went on to win a lot of games. Won 20 games in 1977. He was just the right weight. When he went into a slump, they used to say, well, he's too fat. Well, he wasn't too fat. He just was in a slump. There you go. That has been the age old. Paradox, so to speak, in baseball. When you're going good, hey, don't change a thing. Do, do what, do what. Don't change it is, a thing. Man. When you're going bad, hey, you're overweight, man. When you're going bad, hey, you got to start getting some sleep. <laughs> I mean, that's the way it is. True. And then, if you're a hitter, hey, we got to get your eyes checked. That happens a lot. San Francisco Giants when I was there years ago if anybody had a bad arm they sent you to the dentist. I pretty much thought they'd send you to the trainer but they always sent you to the dentist. They said well, something has to be wrong with your teeth. If your arm is bad. OK well maybe there's something to it. There is something to it. Mo Drabowski. When Mo first came up with the Cubs Mo was. High 90s fastball. As that ball hit hard into. Left center field it's off the wall. So Nunez pulls up with a double. That's his ninth two bagger. But when Mo, he was a high nice. Then he he lost his fastball, and they sent him to the dentist. Well, they found out that he had some bad teeth back there, and that bacteria was draining down from his teeth into his shoulder. They fixed his teeth. A month and a half, two months later, he's back in the high nineties again. The you know, just wanted me to go to the dentist. And he made me go to the dentist because uh, there for a while I was losing. I couldn't. I had like warning track power. And that wasn't me. Went to the dentist. He fixed a couple of teeth that I had. A couple of weeks, three weeks later, I started hitting the ball in the upper duck again. But there's always something of that nature when you're going yep. bad. They will find something. Here's Overbay. But the dentist would back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, that was one of the first guys they sent you to have your teeth checked out. Any abscesses. Polly, ball hit sharply, me and all two out. Two times that Hector has gotten hit by the right handers because he's gotten the ball up in the zone. That time he got the ball down in the zone, but over Bay's a dead low ball hitter. Hit the ball awfully hard, but fortunately, right at Canerco. Austin Romine at 215, a homer he's driven in six. A 
center field straight away for Romine and Diaz is very deep in center field. Well, would you say this is one of the toughest times that CC has gone through in his career? Oh, I would. I would say absolutely. A guy that's won 200 games. Yeah. He's close to 100 over 500. He's 200 and 112. He hasn't gone through times like this too often. He gone. They get a hit, strand one, and after an inning half, they lead it to nothing. And great seats are still available for the remainder of the season. Prices have been greatly reduced, and the schedule is full of terrific matchups, promotional nights, post-game fireworks. Lower-level tickets for all remaining Monday through Saturday games start as low as 20 bucks, and Sundays start as low as only 15 bucks. So purchase your tickets whitesocks.com or 866-SOX-GAME. One of the problems with Sabathia has not been control because he's walked just 38 men and 152 and two-thirds. His problem is keeping the ball in the ballpark. He's given up 24 home runs this year. That's far and away the team lead. And that's one of the big factors. However, the stuff, okay, 132 strikeouts and 152 innings. Paulie, 17 for 76 with three homers lifetime off CC. 17 for 76, potential Santi. 224. That's a lot of at bats against one pitcher. But with his days with the Cleveland Indians, where you play six series against them, you're going to pick up a lot of at bats. That ball hit high and deep in the center field. Gardner back at the fifth stretch. Another hang welcome for Pauly. Not the most artistic catch that Brett Gardner will ever make because he went back. That ball was drifting on him. He was circling the wagons for a bit. As Sabathia gets that ball up, it's a fastball. Gardner going back. And finally makes the catch with about two or three feet to spare. Here's Beckham. CC has always been fun to watch pitch, and he has been a pitcher from the first time we saw him. Well, he could throw. he could really throw hard, but the thing was he could take five six miles off the fastball, and you couldn't tell because he had the same release point and same arm velocity. He knew what he was doing out there, and that was as a young kid he could yeah. do that. Yeah, he was. He's always been fun to watch. Oh yeah, he's he's also been one of those guys in the past that you get to the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning, he could still get it up there, 96, 97 with no problem. 
That One was a two. Good, that was a good change. Kept that ball down. That has popped up. Second baseman to second baseman. Two down. And here comes Tank. Missed yesterday with that jam left thumb. He caught a tremendous break because that could have easily ended his season. On that dive in left field, he jammed the thumb. Fortunately, he missed very little time. It was a hand injury for hitters. It usually causes you a great deal of distress. Well, I recall Tim Salmon making a diving play against us at the Big A in Anaheim, and poof, he gone. Happens a lot. Yeah. The tank dives a lot. This is a play we're talking about in left field. Sinking line drive. He came out as he usually does, didn't make the play, but rolled over the thumb. Still managed an assist from left field, threw him out at second base. One two pitch. The stuff looks pretty good from what we've seen here in the 93 miles an hour inside and occasionally yeah. 92 93 upstairs. Not bad. That is my buddy would say. Yeah, this stuff looks all right, but his molecules ain't right. Well, they haven't been right this year. That's what I'm saying. You look at that ERA, you just have to shake your head. Just under 480. Once again, the 2 2. First time that this Yato has faced CeCe. High, high pop up. Nunez making the call. Has the ball. And that'll be tied the side. So that is six up, six down for CeCe.
White Sox host their rival twins on Comcast Sportsnet. Tune in at 1230 and 7 o'clock as the AL Central rivals square off in a back-to-back contest in one day. White Sox Twins Game 1 coverage kicks off Friday at 1230 on Comcast Sportsnet. Top of the order here in the top of the third. Gardner, Soriano, and Alex. Gardner, first pitch of the ball game, lay down a beautiful drag bunt. It's got to be pretty much a lost art, but especially lefty on lefty, you would think that guys would work on it a whole lot more because it evens up the lefty lefty advantage, especially if you have any speed at all. Well, I think you and I both on the same page with the odds that if he could lay, if he could get 15 of those a year, that's 30 points. He can do it. He's good enough to do it. He just doesn't work near as much on it. And usually he bunts to third base. So this is how you drag bunt with a left hander up. He had made this decision before. Keeps ahead of the bat up and bunts it by the pitcher, forcing Gordon Beckham to make the play. He probably made that decision before he put the uniform on today. Two two pitch. He gone. Time now for a Firestone Complete Auto Care Extra Mile Index. And it's starters ERA since July 26th. For the Tigers on top, followed by the Dodgers, the Giants, the Royals, the Marlins, and then our Sox with an ERA of 260, and yet just a 2 and 10 record in that span. So here's the difference in the ball game. With back to back, either screw balls or changes, and he got it up and it was out. And it didn't take long. No, he hit it a long way. Soriano just two hits away from 2,000 in his career. Yankees have him again next season. Most of that money paid by the Cubs as they traded him to New York. New York needed a right handed bat because their difference makers were pretty much all left handed. And they thought Soriano, if he came in and got hot for any length of time, might help them improve on that wild card chase. They're six games back. They have to jump over three teams to catch Texas. So it's going to be a, a real tough go for the Yankees. There is the wild card. The Rays playing good solid baseball. With the Rangers starting to really heat it up. And then the Orioles. And the reception that A-Rod receives once again. He's 0 for 1. Went out to right field. He just missed it. High towering pop up. Just like Girardi was talking about on Monday. He said, We're used to getting booed. <laughs> well, there's not a whole lot of people with any love for a team that has won more than any other team in the history of the game. And there's a base hit. So one out, two on. This is another screwball, and it's not a bad pitch. He kept it out away. A-Rod reaches out, drills it in the left field, sends Tyler Flowers to the mound. Well, as a rule, there are always exceptions to every rule in baseball, but as a rule, when a guy has been out and he's been rehabbing, 
coming off whatever injury it may be. When they get back, their best chance to do some damage is either on a hanger or something off speed. He waited back nicely on that screwball. He did and hit it in the perfect spot. So here's Cano. Grinded out hard to Pauly. Yankees have a big decision because they do have a lot of money still on the books that will still be in place next year and down the road. And they get Robinson Cano, a free agent who's probably going to be looking anywhere from 150 to 200 million dollars. Yet at this point, he's their most productive player. Throw to second, and they don't get him as it throws off a mark. And that may have got Alexei in a wrist. I think that's exactly what happened. Well, he put the glove down and didn't use it. Well, there's, there's, uh, you just mentioned a situation that's kept Brian Cashman from getting the kudos that he deserves. They always say, well, he's got Yankee money. Well, he's got Yankee. Well, sure, he's got Yankee money, but he has used Yankee money well. If, if they made some bad decisions on certain players, certainly every club has, and every club will. Our club has made bad decisions. Every team. But if you check out Brian Cashman's record, his winning percentage on general managers whose career began in 1950 or later, with a minimum of 10 seasons and a minimum of 1,000 wins, his winning percentage is number one. Not surprising. He's had some powerhouses in the year. He's made some good deals. As that pitch stay in here. Gillespie. All right. Two down. The one problem. If you're the Yankees. Is that once you've allocated the funds to guys who are getting older and most of these guys are yes. and the salaries continue to move on. If you don't develop your farm system and the Yankees don't have a strong farm system. Then. Those cheaper players that you need. To fill in for guys as they get older aren't there and that's been the one problem with the Yankees the last few years is they used to develop some very very good players from their system lately it hasn't been that way. Well they. For a long time have not had very high draft choices. No. And you've got there's only. There's only two ways to get draft choices that's either by losing. Or by trading some veteran players for some real good draft choices. But there are teams also that win and still have productive systems. Yeah, St. Well, Louis you Cardinals, know yourself. Atlanta Braves. All right, you, you follow the, the systems pretty well. Yep. In fact, very well, as a matter of fact. As well as anybody. Of the 30 teams, give me a number on how many teams you think have strong farm systems. I mean, right now? Right now. Have strong farm systems. What you and I would consider to be strong. There they go. Think about it. We'll talk. Get back into it after okay. this ball. Maybe is hopefully no. <laughs> Nobody could get there. And it's three nothing. I think we're at the visibility point where they're just not seeing the ball well. That being said, ball up this long. Has got to be caught. Now with the runners going, Gordon Beckham was taken out of the equation, and that's probably one of the reasons why the ball fell. Gordon was covering second base. Normally, this is a play that he's going to make. Paulie was drifting way back. He had very little chance to get it, and Alex was playing deep. So, and Paulie knew that Gordon was covering second right, because of the movement. Yeah, it created the base hit. So here's Granderson. I would say right now as far as 
farm systems that are productive. Six. That's what I would think. That's. I I, I probably would have said four or five. But you follow that closer than I do, so I'll go with your six out of thirty. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt it's difficult to develop players. It's one thing, look, scouting and player development have to work hand in hand. You can be a terrific scouting team if you can't develop them, it doesn't matter. You can be a great developing team, but if your scouts don't get you the players, then it doesn't matter. But if they work hand in hand, you will have a good system. There he goes. Tyler can't find the ears. Well, it's like sales and production. <laughs> it's true. Constant battle. They'll sell everything and as much <laughs> of it as they can. Now you got to go produce if it. If you can't make it, that's yeah, right. You got a problem. So this turns into right now after that high pop up that fell in. This turns into a very big out. Last year, everybody talked about how weak the White Sox farm system was. And throughout the course of the season, they showed them how strong indeed the White Sox farm system was. Good arms, very good arms brought to the major leagues. You're looking at one of them right there. Addison Reed, Nate Jones, a couple more from the system. Well, we did something no other team in Major League Baseball history has done. Is that is high in the center field? That's going to turn out to be a can of corn. But they get a—I'm not going to call it a gift run, but they get a run that could have been kept off the board. Meanwhile, it's three nothing Yankees. Background of what makes this sport so intense. Don't miss the behind the scenes story as CSN goes on board with Chicago based Taylor Canfield and his team ranked second in the world. Tomorrow at 10 o'clock, only on Sportsnet Central. 3 5 and 0 for their guys. No runs, no hits, no errors for our guys. CC has retired all six, but getting back to the farm system, Steve. Of the six that you consider to have strong, six teams of the 30 that you consider to have strong farm systems, how many of those six are contenders? I would say right now, probably four. That's pretty good. Be a contender and have a strong farm system. Well, again, it becomes scouting and player development. When they work hand in hand, they work well. Even if you pick down, I mean, you know, everybody figures if you get a high pick in that first round, he's going to be successful. Maybe the second round. But the good organizations will get those draft picks from 5 to 15. 
and a lot of those guys come through and play very well for them. Well, you know, I've, we talked yeah. about it. my favorite pitchers, especially are from eight to fifteen, yeah. eighth round to fifteen rounds, because those guys are competitors. For me, the worst draft pick, number one draft pick that you can get is a high school pitcher. They don't work out very well. It's the highest upside, but the odds are phenomenally against you of it working out. For every Dwight Gooden, there'll be a thousand that don't get there. Casper takes that breaking ball down and in. Full count. Casper has faced CC six times, has two hits, one of which stayed in the park. One out, but getting back to last year and everybody gloom and doom about our White Sox farm system. We did something that no other team in Major League Baseball history has ever done. And that was in Kansas City. We used 10 rookie pitchers. And besides that, we won the ball game. There has never been 10 rookie pitchers used in one Major League game before or since. And that's not a bad farm system when you can bring up 10 rookies that are on your staff. No, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be done again either for some time. And it. If it's not done in September, then you've got a team that's going to finish way back. Yeah. Well, when Pinella was managing Tampa Bay, they promised him they were going to spend X amount of dollars on free agents and have an X amount of dollar payroll. He managed one year. He had 12 pitchers on his staff. Every one of them made the minimum. <laughs> one and two. You can understand where Lou might get a little frustrated by that. Well, they promised him that they're, you know, they were going to spend some money, yep. and they saddled him with a pitching staff, all making the minimal. And that's never been done before. That breaking ball hit right at him. That's a hang with him. And that'll bring up flowers. And send us your comments on tonight's game through Twitter using hashtag White Sox Talk, and we'll read one back later in the game, and it just might be yours. Had a chance before the game to talk with Derek Jeter. I wished him luck the rest of the way. Told him I realized how frustrating it could be. He's been on record as saying that this is the worst year by far he's ever experienced. Five games total. Every time he gets back off the DL, he goes right back on. Pretty much shows you how much the Yankees miss when he's not in the lineup. His presence. His presence is. Hard to explain. Flowers, Soriano. That is nine up, nine down for Sebastian.
Los Tacos from Taco Bell. Live Mox. And you can stop by Bacardi at the Park at USA La Fila at the Gate 5 Plaza. Bacardi at the Park offers a full menu from Gibson's Restaurant Group and opens four hours prior to all home games. So Bacardi at the Park, grab your friends and give them a visit. And ask for Sil. Sil Process, Vasilios. Sil Process, and he'll take care of you. Nunez crushed the ball last time up, but was left stranded. 3 0 Yankees here in the top of the fourth. Second inning in St. Louis, Dodgers leading. Jake Westbrook and the Cardinals 3 0. Threatening for more. There's the strike. And that's a souvenir right side. Uni is one of seven guys they've used at shortstop. Likewise at third base. It's been a revolving door on the left side. And another souvenir. I talked to a couple of Yankee people that said without question that this is the worst right handed hitting team they have ever seen. That's one of the reasons why they thought Soriano would really help them. We've seen that tonight. That ball hit deep. It's 4 0. First home run of the year. First home run since last September. And Nunez has hit the ball very well in this series. Now this ball is a lot higher than Santiago would have wanted it. It was thigh high right on the inner portion of the plate. And Nunez has hit two bullets. First pitch strike to Overbay who grounded out hard. Very hard to Canerco. Fourteenth home run that Hector has thrown this year. That breaking ball it took a good hack at it. Finale of this three game set. Off day tomorrow. Then Friday, Saturday and Sunday, the Minnesota Twins on Friday. That will be a split double header. Game one at one, game two at seven. This one just misses on outside. Might have had a bit of the corner. Big on. Just a second time all year that Hector has given up as many as two home runs. That time he throws the screwball to the left hander and gets it. Almost got him. Romine struck out his first trip. And there's a strike. Right 
right at him. Two down. That wind very much of a factor down on the field. Unlike last night when it was blowing toward the left field corner. Tonight, those flags are starched and blowing out toward right and right center. So here's Gardner, a bunt single on the first pitch of the ball game and a strikeout. A shank out of play. The Yankees have actually done a pretty good job of playing within their division. They got a winning record, which is something to be said for the American League East, which is always a tough division. One into the count. Dodgers now leading the Cardinals four nothing. That's fair ball. And that'll retire the sign. But the first home of the year by Eduardo Nunez, and it's a four nothing Yankee lead. Swiss Sox in game live only at CSNChicago.com. Brought to you by Comcast Business Class. Four nothing. Bad guys. Bottom he, of the fourth. Here's a young Sox fan. Like to see somebody get on base. We have had none. Nada. And not one ground ball yet through nine hitters. Corners in close. And a breaking ball strike. Well, that's how you take away the buck. Overbay is well in on the grass. As is Rodriguez. And both coming forward a step. And you can cancel a post game show.
Ramirez has always hit Sabathia. And he's one for two. A ringing single to left field. Stops the streak at nine straight retired. There's Diazza. He lined out hard to left field. Takes first pitch strike. A cutter. That's what you were talking about earlier. At 91. Now usually on the fastball, he can make it do that, but you don't expect that on the change or the sinker. Because when that happens, number one, you don't get any ground balls, and number two, if it's on the change, you're going to get hurt. Oh, and to the count. Most hits in the major leagues since July 9th, Alejandro Diaz. Only behind Kendry's Morales. Chris Johnson leading the National League in hitting his third. All of them tied with 35 hits. Over Bay. Return. 363. Good solid throw by Overbay is the key to this one. He doesn't take a step and gets a return throw, and they get a very fleet Alejandro Diaz by a full step. And that's why you want a left handed first baseman. It helps. Helps a lot. You don't have to just artificially move out to get an angle. And not a whole bunch of Frank Thomases around. <laughs> Only thing that Big Hurt could not do. On a baseball field. Throw. Even when he came up, the arm wasn't there? No. Frank ran pretty dead gum good, especially for a big guy. Had good hands. He could hit it, but he couldn't throw it. There's the statue, and he could hit it. Two out, two and one to count. And that'll retire the side. We get the leadoff single, then quickly the double play, the grounder to second, and we're into the fifth.
Elvis themed post game fireworks display presented by St. Xavier University. St. Xavier University, success with purpose. 3w.sxu.edu. St. Xavier University. Soriano. Two run homer, a walk, and a run scored. And what? it's not a big White Sox. Hello, and hope you're feeling better to one of, if not the. Is that a little grounder? Greatest retinal surgeons, not just in the country, in the world. Maybe the best. Kirk Paco. Had a little surgery, and Kirk, hope you're feeling better, buddy. The man is absolutely an unbelievable surgeon. Here's Alex. Just missed one in the first inning, then singled sharply in the whole left side in the third. Four six and zero oh for their guys. Oh one and zero oh for our guys. Just missed that one. High towering, and Casper's going to call him off. He thought he had a shot at hitting this one out. No. But just got under it. It wasn't his wheelhouse, it was up and right down the middle. You think the Yankees have a shot to make the wild card this year? From what they've done so far, yes. From what they've done so far with the lineup that Joe Girardi's had to put out there, obviously it would mean that uh, well, Granderson would have to become Granderson. Granderson again. Has, right. That's that. That you start with him. And A. Rod would have to stay in, and he's going to appeal, so he's going to be able to stay in. Yeah. The lineup would look a whole lot better than what they've been running out there. Oh, it'd be unbelievable as far as that. So, and you know, you just don't know if they're pitching. You know, Hughes is having a tough time. Cease yep. is having a tough time. So, if those guys can get it together, you know that old saying in baseball. You've heard it a thousand times, Stevie. You're never as good as you look when you're winning, <laughs> or as bad as you look when you're losing. It's true. And it, for some reason, it always holds true in this game of baseball. But there are always exceptions. Well, you can get on a roll, and their pitching staff has been good enough, as our pitching staff has been, to put together a fairly substantial run. Now, they haven't been able to do it yet. Our ball club hasn't been able to do it yet. You just hope the pitching stays there and the offense can somehow catch up. Yeah, well, as far back as we are, we're not going to make a run at that. But they're ten and a half back, and in that tough division over there, if you make a run with a parity in that division, you never know. I just think the two teams at the top are going to be too tough for the Yankees to catch both. Well, the, question is, uh, the question is on the wild card, being six back and five back in the loss column in the wild card. They might be able to put something together now. Because you got to jump over three teams it might be a bit of a pipe dream but. They still got plenty of talent down on the field. If those guys if those yeah, guys if they can in that lineup. Back. Because what Girardi has done he's done he's been a Houdini. As far as mixing matching putting. Guys we never even heard of. Out there. And doing things like we saw in the first game, Vernon Wells playing first base for the first time in his career. Yeah. Now Cabrera has just gone deep for the 33rd time this year. And Chris Davis, it is 41st home run for Baltimore. 
Tigers now leading 4 3. Game in the eighth inning. Not surprising. Well, again, we talked about it and touched on it the other day on Monday. That first game was a devastating loss mentally for the Indians. I believe the Tigers have beaten the Indians 9 of 10 this year. So going in and you got the game in hand, you're in the ninth inning and you give up four. Knowing this could be a crucial series and if you win them all, you're going to take over first place. Yeah. I would say the first game was a crusher for them. Yeah, so far that's been the definitive game of the season for the Tribe. There always is one or two definitive games in the season when you're trying to contend and try to get to postseason play. Look at the snap. I'll tell you, he can pick it. He's taking Burley's place right there. Hector. Meanwhile, we're halfway home and we trail it by four. First piece of the puzzle as far if there is any chance of them getting back into it. Hey, he's going to be there the rest of the year. Yeah. So get Granderson back. And don't put anything past Brian Cashman either. There's a lot of absolutely outstanding deals made through the waiver process. And you know the majority of them for good players boils down to money. Yeah. Not so much prospects but money. Yeah, that's what it's going to be is how much will you take that's of it. this particular contract when a guy makes it through waivers because he might have a year and two months left on his contract. Bali in the hole. Nunez low throw but over Bay. Sox fans want to get closer to the action next time you're here at US Cellular Field we'll upgrade your seats directly from your mobile device through MLB's at the ballpark app available as a free download for iPhone and Android upgrading your seats is fast simple and fun just hit the upgrade button when you get to the ballpark and enjoy the game from the comfort of your new seats. Takes the bunt and takes one of the few strike. slow curveballs that CC has thrown. He drops it over on the first pitch. I think Gordon probably would have laid it down had he gotten a fastball.
What did Derek tell you about his situation? Just the frustration of what he's gone through, how hard he worked two different times to come back. He's got a calf strain. He said he truly hopes when he does get healthy and he's doing everything he can to rehab it and get back with the ball club, he hopes that this time it actually holds up. Because, you know, coming back from the ankle problem, first thing he did was come back and get hurt right away, and I believe it was a thigh the first time. Yeah, it was a quad, right? Came back again. The same thing, rehab, got strong enough, ready to play, and strained the calf muscle. That ball hit high and deep. Stay fair. Stay fair. It will. You can put it on the board. Yes. Yes. Home run for Gordon. And it's a 4-1 ball game. Third home run of the year, 15th driven in, and the 25th given up by CC Sabathia. This one had plenty of distance. Our forward home run replay, the only question would be, would it stay fair? It hugged the line the whole way. This is the second curveball in the sequence, and the second one goes out. So here's Tank. And that is the 100th home run hit by our Sox this year. And of course, with that home run, the Alex Nellius family, a generous donation to White Sox charities in loving memory of Ursula. Sully's happy. Grace and Glenn are happy. His mom and two sisters. Yeah, I went in to see Derek twice. And he was back in the training room. Boy, you sure like to think from a baseball standpoint, you sure like to see him get back in there. Well, he means everything to this ball club. His presence. It's just. We talked about him last night. And the one thing that he's always been. When he gets on the field, he's the smartest guy on the field. I'm not talking about taking an IQ test. I'm talking about baseball acumen. He is the smartest player on the field. And he makes everybody around him better because of positioning and what he can do as the captain of that team. Which is not an easy thing. Not, not easy to take that responsibility, especially on the biggest stage that we have in this sport. Well, occasionally you run across players who are not only the smartest player on the field, they're the smartest person, person on the field. Yeah. Including both managers. <laughs> I remember when the Angels traded for Freddie Lynn. Gene Mock called me up. Gene and I were golfing buddies. He said, Hawk, what am I getting here? I said, I'll tell you what you're getting here. You're getting a guy, if you let him play 140 games, you can get yourself a hell of a player. But don't make him take himself out. You take him out and take him out in front of the rest of the ball club. And besides that, you're going to get a guy that probably knows more about the game, Gene, than you do. He started laughing. I said, I'm serious. That ball in the right center field, but they got a man there. Granderson, crowd number two. Yeah, you get guys, you get guys like Cal Ripken Jr., whose dad was a manager, and he and Billy. Know an awful lot about the game of baseball. As here is Casper. The Jeters of that ilk. Just terrific players. Better people. Chopper to Hopper. A home run by Beckham. We get on the board as we go to the sixth trailing 4-1.
by Pepsi on Friday. That's at 710 when our Sox take on the Minnesota Twins. Purchase tickets today by visiting whitesox.com slash country or calling 866 Sox game. And of course that will be a day night doubleheader. Game one at one, game two at seven. Vernon Wells one for two, RBI single, also a stolen base. Starts him off with a screwball. First game of the series. Vernon looked like the old Vernon. Boy, he just racket attacked it, didn't he? Got that breaking ball and softly hit into the left field. That time he went down and got the screwball. And hit it off the end of the bat. So he was well out in front of it. This is slow curveball. Doesn't get a whole lot of it. But gets enough for his second hit. And here's Vanderson. Curtis has struck out and popped up the fairly deep center. Takes that curveball on the way. Same year, a broken wrist and a broken knuckle for Curtis Granderson. So for him, along with a few other of these Yankees, a very disappointing injury filled season. Well, in a way, that's what got us off on a bad note. More injuries this year than I can than I can recall, and you've been here forever and Ever. Everybody says the same thing. Herm Schneider says the same thing. Never seen that before. With our ball club. Injury after injury after injury. There's a couple of guys that do a real good job. Brian Ball sitting to the left of Herm Schneider. Hermie's been around forever. And Alan Thomas. We have a, in our core of doctors. We have been in good shape for a long time in that category. And Don is out there for one reason because he knows that there has been one inning in all the performances that Hector's had this year where he starts to lose his concentration and loses his release point. And you're at the point now in a four to one game where this one is hardly put away. So Don wants to make sure that he gets Hector thinking about where he wants to throw the ball, get his concentration back. And remind him he's still in the game with Ramon Troncoso loosening up in case that concentration doesn't come back. Two and one. Two home runs given up. Four runs overall. High pop up left side. Casper's there. In the Cardinal game, Shelby Miller, starter, got hit in the elbow. Had to leave at the swing. Two pitches. He's one of the real bright young pitchers in all of baseball. You watch his stuff, and he's got a chance to be something special. So hopefully. He's okay. Because he's just one of the real good arms to come out of that St. Louis organization. They got a bullpen full of guys that are throwing in the mid to upper 90s. Left handers and right handers. And Shelby Miller is one of their better starters. Nunez, two for two. A hard double and a hard home run. One coming in the fourth and a no doubter. Got that ball on the inner portion, got it thigh high. First home run since last September for Eduardo Nunez.
Now feel for the most part straight up. 2 0 the count. So Nunez with the catbird seat. And down on the farm. Abasel Garcia went two for four again last night, hitting 409. That's good. And the counts three and zero. Marcus Simeon did a home run. Good looking young infielder and Daniel Webb extended his scoreless appearance streak to eight games. It didn't take long. Four in a row. So the second walk, and that'll bring up Overbay. The Daniel Brennan. <laughs> I should say Daniel Webb. Daniel Webb, 18 innings, 31 strikeouts. You like to see that? How many walks to go with it? 11. Not bad. We got to throw as hard. Breaking ball, couldn't get it. I was talking with Kurt Hassler this this spring. I said, Kurt, give me a guy to follow this summer. Somebody I don't know. First name out of his mouth, Daniel Webb. Kurt, longtime pitching coordinator for us. In fact, this is his 22nd season as a pitching coach in our system. Foul tip, then the count one and two. And of course, Eric Johnson, the big right hander down there, got called up to Charlotte from Birmingham. We saw him in the spring, and I don't doubt that he's going to be in our major league rotation, just a question of when. He's got very good stuff. Appeared to have good composure when we saw him in the spring. That was what impressed us yep. both was his presence yep. out there. Souvenir left side. Overbase had some pretty big years in the major leagues. He had 312 in 2006 with Toronto. Started his career with Arizona. Went to Milwaukee at 301. That was back in 2004. So he's done a pretty good job overall. But he never has had the big power that you would associate with a first baseman. He gone. Two down. Just strike out. To the high heat right by him. And with an uppercut swing. You just cannot get on top of a high fastball. And here comes Robin. And as he makes his way out there, Mike Trout turns 22 years old today. And Mike Trout is the only player in Major League history to have at least 50 home runs. And 70 stolen bases before his 22nd birthday. So, Santiago departs, and we'll be back.
He comes in at this at one and three. The ERA a little above five and a half on for the 21st time. He inherits Yankees at first and second. It's a four to one game here in the top of the sixth inning. He needs an out to get out of the inning. And he'll be facing the number nine hitter. Romine 0 for 2. Hit the ball pretty well last time up. Right at the Ozen center field. But getting back to Trout, boy, with what we got coming into baseball today, you got Harper, Trout. As I said, those might be the best two since we had Lynn and Rice back in 75. And Will Myers coming up this year just tearing it up well, for Tampa Bay. We've been talking about him for the last two years. Yeah. He was their number one prospect. They traded him away for pitching. And it's worked for Kansas City. I mean, they got Wade Davis and they got James Shields. But the cost was a guy who probably can play the outfield another 10 plus years at a tremendously high level. But that's what good pitching costs you. If you have that guy. I remember. When DJ was with me. Two years before each row came here he was talking about. Mark they got a guy over in Japan it's unbelievable because he played against him. DJ played against him. and he said they got a guy over there. I said. Give me a give me a name who is comparable to over here. He said I can't. He said this guy is something. He was just like you were talking about two years well, ago. He, Will Myers. Say, he was a pretty, he was a pretty good scout because there probably isn't anybody like Ichiro. One of the greatest right fielders we've yeah. ever seen. One of the greatest arms we've ever seen. Base runner. Base runner. It's going to be in the Hall of Fame in Japan and Cooperstown. As there is a strike. So the count three and one. Indians just tied it up on Jan Gomes knocking in Michael Brantley. I will predict for you that he will be their number one catcher next year. Yeah. Jan Gomes will be number one with the Indians. There's another one. I told you he, he does he does just the way he does things. He reminds me a lot of Thurman Munson. Except he throws better than Thurman. Doesn't hit better. Well, he's got to prove to me he can hit better than Thurman <laughs> Munson, especially in the seventh, eighth, and ninth innings. Doesn't hit better. No. He was something. Yeah. And he walks the ninth place here. So, going to bring up Gardner. First pitch of the game, lay down a drag bunt. Beat it out. Well, you got Veal standing up in the bullpen and Don Cooper to the telephone. If they want Veal to come in the game, someone's going to make a trip to the mound. And that man who's going to make a trip to the mound is Robin. So apparently, Veal is 100%. Robin's going to take his time walking out there. He's going to walk out slowly. And he might spend some time out there if Donnie Veal is not ready yet. So he has signaled. Donnie Veal is ready to go. So as Troncoso walks out and Veal walks in, we'll step out and be back after these messages.
bases loaded and Beal at one and two. The ERA six and three quarters on for the 27th time. The biggest problem, 12 walks and 16 innings. He cannot afford one here as he faces Brett Gardner, their leadoff hitter. Let's take a look at our AT&T U-verse multi-view with the bases loaded. Not a great deal of speed out there. Well, that's where he's got to get the breaking ball over. If he gets it over, Gardner's gone. If he does. Well, then eventually he'll probably walk him. Work him into a situation where he's going to see a fastball. And he's a pretty strong guy. He's got to get the breaking ball over. First time Gardner has ever faced Beal. This big pitch. And he grabs a strike. That puts him way ahead of the game right there. That one could have gone either way. And Greg Gibson said it did catch the plate on its way by. Breaking ball sets up everything for Donnie Veal. He pitches out of it, and we'll go to the bottom of the six. We try it by three. See the latest from Bears Camp is a prep for Carolina, and we'll have the latest from the Major League pennant races. See all that and more on Sportsnet Central tonight. Post game live only on Comcast Sportsnet. Bottom of the six, four seven and zero oh for the Yankees, one two and zero oh for our guys. Only one we have is a homer by Gordon Beckham. Gillespie, Flowers, then back to the top of the order with Alexei. One of the things tonight that's made Sabathia as good as he's been is that he's thrown a lot of strike ones. And he hasn't been behind. Very often at all, nary a walk to this point. Well, against us tonight, I mean, they everybody that you talked to on the Yankees and I have too said he's really been struggling. You couldn't tell about his performance tonight. 
Well, it's our first look at them this year. Obviously, our first look at the Yankees this year. But when you're 18 and four against a team, you have a certain amount of confidence going to the mound against them, and Sabathia has shown that. There's a chopper to Hopper Cano. One out. That'll bring it flowers. Those are pretty impressive numbers. Five in the third innings, a couple of hits, the Beckham home run, not a walk, only one strikeout. But he hasn't had to strike people out. Well, we have not stranded a runner. Now the base hit in the double play in the fourth inning and no walks. Feel for the most part straight up for Tyler. That's into left field. Soriano. So twice now, Tyler is lined out to Alfonso. Well, we're talking about Ichiro and what he's done. If you combine his career in Japan with his 12 years here, yeah. He's only 15 hits short of 4,000. And that's in 22 years. Pete Rose played 24 years at 4,256 hits. Quite a remarkable player. Each Rose is a. Pete was a terrific hitter and a winning player. But he didn't have the overall skill set of each row. Not even close. Not even in the same ballpark. <laughs> Pete and I played together in Venezuela and of course against each other for years in spring <laughs> training. Watch out. And that'll retire the side. Hopefully everybody is okay. Meanwhile, a one, two, three inning, we're into the seventh. Pure Coupe. It's a beautiful little vehicle. Tickets are available at U.S. Cellular Field and at WhiteSoxCharities.org until August 30th. Now the winner will be presented their new car in a special on-field ceremony prior to a September game. And White Sox Charities would like to thank Mercedes-Benz of Orlando Park for featuring Orland Park, I should say, featuring the smart car for their generous donations. Matt Lindstrom comes into the game. 
Had a two and three, the ERA 359 and for the 55th time. He inherits a three run deficit. He's got to go right through the middle of the Yankee order. Soriano, one for two with a two run homer. Also a walk and a run scored. Two run homer coming in the top of the first inning. Alfonso has face map 10 times has two hits. Top of the ninth in Cleveland one out ducks on the pond. In a 4 4 tie. They're going to walk Andy Dirks to load him up. Out. So the leadoff single. Second hit of the night for Soriano as he takes it right back up the middle. A low fastball. Lindstrom has no chance. This ball is by him before he can even react. Soriano now with 1,999 hits. And here is Rodriguez. He's one for three. He said three pretty good at bats. He's faced Matt four times and he's drawn the column. Yankees coming into this game We're tied with the Royals in the major leagues for the fewest home runs hit by right handed hitters. So, what we were talking about with the pickup of Soriano, the entrance of Rodriguez into the lineup. Haven't they found a new home run hitter in Eduardo Nunez? <laughs> He's up to one. And get Curtis Granderson back in there, and things might be a little different. Picture of A Rod from afar. Yeah, he's averaging just 3.82 runs this year. That's the lowest per game since 1990. Two one pitch. And now he's got the catbird seat. Well, you got to keep your eye on Soriano here because he has shown that he will take off. Even though the knees aren't as good as they used to be. And he's a bit older. And a lot of trouble brewing right here. Two on, nobody out. And guess who's coming to the plate? And with nobody up in the bullpen, the last man you want to see when you can't pitch around him in a run scoring situation, especially with Matt's problems with the left hand hitters this year.
Well, Matt's got the talent. He's got a big fastball. This problem has been when he gets in trouble, he just makes a lot of bad pitches. The stuff is good enough. It always has been. Yeah. Cano does that just about as well as anybody, especially late in the ball game. He'll just stand there and look at a pitch. Dylan Axelrod throwing in the pen. All right, boys. Uh, perfect. Four, six, three, double play. Rack them up. That's our 100th double play turn. This is an easy one. It's hit hard, but it's hit right at Gordon Beckham. Goes with the backhand flip because he's got plenty of time. And Cano grounds into his 15th double play of the year. Tops on the ball club in that department. And usually that goes to the guy who hits the ball the hardest. So here's Wells, two for three with an RBI. Probably going to be talking to him about the first pitch. And Vernon's propensity for jumping on it. Off day tomorrow. Then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, the Minnesota Twins come to town. Friday, split doubleheader. One o'clock. Start for the first game and seven o'clock for game two. Throws a good slider on the first pitch and Wells takes it. Nice block by top. Wells has faced Matt twice. He's 0 for 2.
ended the seventh. That's a rocket. You put the glove down and just hope it sticks. It did. <laughs> it's fairly easy after that. Well, we've all been there, done it. You. <clears throat> All right, boys, we need some points. Corners in close. Diazza has lined out to left and hit into a 3 6 3 double play. CC has been dealing tonight, giving up one run. That was a homer by Beckham on just two hits. The other hit was a solid single to left by Alexi back in the fourth inning. CC retired the first nine he saw. Bottom of the ninth, then Cleveland tied at four. Bruce Rondon. He had the hard throwing Rondones. One and two the count. Gap out there in right center. Gardner over towards Soriano and left. Twenty-five thousand seven oh seven. Watch out. You just joining us, Yankees two in the first, one in the third, one in the fourth. And a good way to start here. Solid single to center. The other in the two spot. Don't see that too often with Ramirez leading off. And now Sabathi has to go through the heart of the order. Here's Alex. He's going out to center and grounded to second and takes first pitch strike. But I like Diaz in the two spot, but I'm not doing leading off. First of all, Lexi's got 23 stolen bases and 27 attempts. And Diaz has been a run producer this year. Yeah. And with Alexei, is yes, there's a nice Alex getting the hang of that. So now there's a turn. And he will go into third. So we got the tie run coming to the plate. And you would think at this point that Joe Girardi would get that bullpen up and going. Runners at the corners, nobody out. The fourth hit of the night through the vacated right side. Easily going from first to third. So a nine game hitting streak by Alex Rios with that opposite field hit. And here's Pauly. Pauly has gone out deep to center, taking Gardner right up against that 400 foot sign. Takes breaking ball strike. Good eye. Evens accounted one. I think CC wanted that one, and Romine is talking it over with Greg Gibson. This ball has the whole plate. 
Now he didn't catch it and frame it well. That probably cost Sabathia the strike. That ball hit hard. Get over his head. It will. One hop off the State Farm sign. So they're going to hold Alex now at third as DeAnza scores. It's a 4 2 ball game. Ducks on the pond. Nobody out. I'm at number 38. As Paul just crushes one, Samantha gets it up and out over the plate. So they elected not to get the bullpen up and going, but with Larry Rothschild taking a long, slow walk to the mound, you would think that Ben would be going for the first time tonight. Now Paul has been swinging it bat well, coming up empty. Three balls hard last night. Three balls hard tonight. And Gordon Beckham at the plate. Here's our Xfinity high speed action dream. And it came in the fifth inning. Gordon hitting his third home run of the year. He got the second curveball in the at bat and hit it out. Doesn't need a long ball here. Any old base hit will do. Four eight and zero oh for the Yankees. Two five and zero oh for our Sox. And there's a 92 mile an hour fastball with some movement. Preston Claiborne throwing in the bullpen. It looks like he'll be joined by Boone Logan. Ball hit hard. They're going to go to third base and they're going to get Pauly. Cano, not a chalk player. That's what makes him so exciting to watch. Meanwhile, Alex scores. And it's a 4 3 ball game. Second run batted in by Gordon. And just a terrific play. I mean, Cano realizes that Paulie doesn't run well. And so as he takes off, thinking that they're going to concede third base, Cano makes a great play. Because it's going to be 4 to 3 anyway. And a deep fly ball ties up the ball game. Now, you got the double play in order. Well, besides having great talent, he also has great baseball IQ. Yeah, that was that was a terrific play. Tank takes strike one. He's popped the short and lined out to Granderson and Wright. Out and a hard ground out to third. First pitch strike. Light him up, Casper. Count him as at one. No 
Nunez, Cano, and that'll do it. But we put a two spot on the board, jump right back in it. We're going to the eight trailing now by one. Coming on in a one run game. He's 0 and 1, the ERA 186 on for the 12th time. And he'll look in at Curtis Granderson who will lead it off. Granderson 0 for 3 tonight. A strikeout, a pop up to center, and a pop up to left. Outfield slightly to the left gap out there in right center. Four runs on eight hits for them three runs on five hits for us as Granderson can't get it. Curtis has seen Percy eight times and he's 0 for 8. Bottom of the ninth in Washington, 6 3 Atlanta. Kimbrell along with that 1.21 ERA. Usually that means that you can light up the victory cigar. Atlanta, winners of 12 in a row. However, Kimbrell does have a few men on. Pittsburgh leading Miami 4 2. That game in the top of the ninth at PNC. Four two Kansas City leading Minnesota, bottom of the sixth at Kaufman Stadium. Mets shut out the Rockies 5 0. Harvey 9 3 with a 2.09. That's what you did not want to do. The leadoff walk. Well, Nate Jones ready. See what Robin wants to do with this. Percy's had a very low ERA despite the fact that he has a lot of trouble getting the ball over the plate. Ten walks in nine and two thirds innings, along with four wild pitches. Nunez, a double, a homer, and a walk. And a bunch.
After five in St. Louis, seven three Dodgers. Bottom of the six in Houston, tied at two with Boston. Now he switches it and lines it into right field. So the leadoff walk. And a lot of trouble. That ball up and out of the zone. And Eduardo Nunez with three hits tonight. He's crushed the ball, a triple shy of a cycle. That is a final now from Pittsburgh, 4 2 Pirates. Pirates now. 25 games old. And possibly a three game lead over the Cardinals. But when Pittsburgh started this really good streak. The thought was by the baseball world if they could finish over 500 be a remarkable year. But in that clubhouse they were thinking about doing a whole lot better than that because they knew they had some talent there. Well, McCutcheon Marte. Wow. And they get the Harrison walk off yesterday. It's just coming together for them. Russell Martin's had a, a good run at it and the pitching has been terrific. Russell Martin's had it. Heck of a run. Yep. 2 0 the count to Overbay. He's 0 for 3. And there's the strike. Texas scored one in the top of the first at the big A in Anaheim. For anything better than a soft little tapper that took Gillespie right to the bag, and Overbay doesn't have the speed to beat it on the other end. And here comes Robin. Well, Percy gets in trouble with a leadoff walk and then the single. And he catches a break right there with the ground ball to third, right at the bag. So Percy will depart. Nate comes on and we'll be back.
Sox fans, every home game, the first 25,000 fans will receive a game card containing a promotional code worth an additional 5% discount on your home electricity rate from Constellation. That's an excellent company. So, WhiteSox.com or 866-SOX game. Nate Jones comes into the game with 3-4. His ERA has dropped to 388 on for the 48th time. The one out to get here in the top of the eighth inning. And that out. Austin Romine. It was 0 for 2 with a walk. He struck out in the second. Lined very hard to center in the fourth and then walked in the sixth. 24 year old receiver. High neck in. Slider. Pretty good rip at that one at 98. We mentioned an off day tomorrow, then Minnesota, that split doubleheader on Friday. Singleton's on Saturday and Sunday, then Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday after that, the Tigers come to town. There's that slider. Tigers who have won 10 in a row. And that's what it looks like. We we'll see a whole lot of Minnesota coming up. We we'll see him eight times. Dead game for Cleveland. Extra innings. That progressive field. Now feel straight up about equidistant. Just missed off the outside corner. Not a whole lot of people can throw an 89 mile an hour slider, but it was not in the zone. That one at 100. Another one just missed and didn't miss by much. Hangs full of three and two. Just to not get to Brett Gardner, save him for the ninth. And once again, the payoff. He gone. And that'll retire the side. We go to the bottom of the eighth. We need one to tie.
strikeout of the inning. That one misses up and in to Romine. Fastball fouled off. Good slider. One and two. Two and two. That one just missing outside. And the at bat ends with a hard slider down and away. The whip brought to you by Head and Shoulders. I guess a 91 mile an hour slider. Ichiro takes over in right field. He's going to hit in the two spot vacated by Soriano as Granderson shifts over to left field. Sabathi is still in the game. But the bullpen is ready to go in case he has some problems. Gillespie, Flowers, then back to the top of the order with Ramirez. Connor has lined hard to center and grounded out to second. And the count two and zero. Oh. Start us off right here, Connor. Dodgers now leading the Cardinals 9 3, top of the sixth in St. Louis. Cincinnati beat Oakland 6 5 at the Great American Ballpark. Angels. Watch out, that's foul. Texas scored one in the top of the first. Angels have scored two in the bottom of the first off Ogando. Texas knows that if they win that ball game with the Oakland loss, they can move into a tie for first place in the AL West. When just a little while ago, they were five games back. They've won eight of their last ten. Oakland has lost six of their last eleven. Three and one. It's full. Houston now leading Boston 5 2. Tops of the seventh at the juice box. They're the National League version of the Piranhas. They're a scrappy bunch, but those Piranhas could really play. Those Piranhas. Well, the difference was Piranhas. We're in first place most of the time. But these guys, they come after you. The Astros, they will not quit. Ball hits sharply. Nice pick by Well, oh, He's got some wonderful hands. That was a much tougher play than he made it look. That's going to be the last man that CC Sabathia is going to face, says Gillespie. Continues to hit the ball hard. Robinson Cano picks it cleanly. And CC will depart. So as he steps out, we also will step out and be back after these messages.
Hard throwing right hander. Four and one this year. ERA 175. On for the 50th time. 57 strikeouts, just 13 walks, and 46 and a third. CC with no walks, just one strikeout. Didn't have his great stuff, but it was good enough. Yeah, the stuff he showed us tonight, that's good enough to uh, win a few ball games. Especially when you keep throwing the ball around the plate. Yeah. Which is exactly what he did all night long. So here's Tyler. Twice he is lined out to left field. Takes first pitch strike. And that 2 1 Angel lead over Texas after one, two run homeward by who else? Mike Trout. Pretty amazing. An amazing player. On his 22nd birthday. Well, when you're the only player to do some of the things he's done already in his young short career. We told you earlier, first player to ever hit 50 or more home runs and steal 70 or more bases before the age of 22. <laughs> Remember the first time we saw him watching that speed, watching go from first to third was absolutely amazing for a guy his size. Well, when we first time we saw him, I didn't go down there and uh, and watch BP. I watched it from up here. And then we were in Anaheim. I went down there, and I was really surprised because watching from up here just doesn't look like he's that big. He's big. You stand <laughs> beside him. He's big. He's big. Two and two the count. And that curveball hangs inside. So a full count to Tyler. So two down. Borderline pitch, but it had part of the plate. This one went Robertson's way. In the way Romine is catching him, they appear to be lower than they actually crossed the plate. But when you looked at pitch tracks, it looked like it had the lower part of the zone. Tyler thought it was ball four, was heading to first. I believe gave the boot to Don Cooper. That breaking ball. On pitch tracks, this one could have gone either way. It looked like it had part of the bottom part of the zone. Again, Romine did not frame it well. Uh, 
Now you know what Cooper's yelling at. You didn't give that to my guy. I'm sure it was. <laughs> a few other choice words. Well, actually, this has been really a very well umpired series. Overall, it's been. Like say two for three against Robertson with a homer. But I don't blame Coop. If that's the way he felt. Coop's going to tell him. Yeah, he's three for four. So good speed aboard. And that'll bring up Deonza. Couple of hits tonight for Ramirez, and he represents the tying run. Well, Mike Trout has just done something that no other major league player has ever done. He just keeps putting on that resume. And that was? Only player in major league history to home on his 21st and 22nd birthday. <laughs> well, a year from now, we'll have another opportunity to set another, another extend record. Extend that record. Alejandro's face Robertson twice. He's 0 for 2. First and 30, Alejandro. The rare shortstop that can actually take the ball and go down with it instead of catching the ball and having to come up with it. As he comes up, there's no chance at all as the hand comes off, but the foot stays on the bag. Pitch just off the inside corner. So the count two and one. With two down. No mind wants to have a little chit chat. Four nine and zero oh for the Yankees. Three six and zero oh for our Sox. Three and one with Rios on deck. Just tuning in, they have two home runs tonight. Two runs shot by Soriano in the first, solo shot by Nunez, leading off the fourth. We have one solo shot by Beckham in the fifth. And that is nubbed. And that'll retire the side. We'll go to the ninth. We trail it 4 3.
And it's our Miller moment. And it came back in the fourth inning, the first home run of the year for Eduardo Nunez. And this is the difference in the ball game. As we head into the top of the ninth. Top of the order. Gardner, Soriano, and Rodriguez. And barring scoring three or four runs, we're probably going to see Mariano Rivera. There is the man they call the Sandman. Regardless of how well he's done, and he's done very well, this will be his last performance in his ballpark. And if you missed that game yesterday, Steve was telling you about what he did, and he's doing it in every park his last trip in. What he did was insist on a little meeting with 20 of the people that worked at the ballpark. The stipulation was none of them could wear ties to work. They were people on the maintenance crew. Or in one of the cases, Roy Rivas, who for so long has prepared the meals for everybody associated with the organization. And he gave them all an autograph ball, spoke with them, answered questions. Just a wonderful gesture, a wonderful thing to do. Very, very nice. First time I've ever heard of a player doing that. Ever. No, never heard of it either. And that's into left field. We got a man there. This was Mariano yesterday. There is Roy. Who was absolutely thrilled? Had no idea that he was going to be invited to this. You have a lot of people who have worked so hard for so long in relative obscurity. A moment to touch a piece of greatness, and that greatness, Mariano Rivera. Each row can't get it. Soriano, a two run homer in the first, a walk and a run scored in the third, a ground out to second and the fifth, and a single leading off the seventh. There's a line shot base hit. Sliders and then try to backdoor slider that didn't work. The hands stay right there. Front side has a tendency to fly out, but the hands are always right, getting the bat through the zone. Hands stay right where he sets them. Yeah. He drifts more than any player I have ever seen. His head moves forward more than any hitter of because there is a chopper, and that's going to be foul. On a consistent basis, who's going to be a good hitter on a consistent basis? I've never seen anybody drift up like that. But his hands stay back. Yeah, I don't think you could ever teach anybody to do that. He's a, a once in a generation player. Well, you see a lot of the young Japanese hitters coming over. They try to emulate him, but nobody can, nobody's done it yet. Well, not with this kind of proficiency. Huck, break the, the swing down. Watch how much his head drifts. Mark it on something behind it. Poof. <laughs> of course, the great Ted Williams always said, you got to put a box, imaginary box around your head. It might move forward out of it, but it always comes back to it. His does not. 
but somehow and I don't know how he's able to keep his hands back and make solid contact. That fastball at 100 to Alex. Alex has had four good at bats. He just missed hitting one his first time. Singled. In the whole left side in the third inning. Just missed one in the fifth. And he walked in the seventh. Pretty good lead by Ichiro. So the wild pitch. There was no chance at all for Tyler Flowers. Heath wild pitch. As this one is way wide. One and two count with one out as each row leads away at second base. Gordon Beckham trying to keep him as close as he can at second. And he misses with a slider and the count evens at 2 2. Outfield straight away. It's a 4 to 3 game. Yankees have out hit our Sox 10 to 6. It's been an airless game to this point. And a 2 2 pitch. He gone. Two down. Here's a good hard slider. Well, you got first base open, you got Cano at the plate. I put him on first base and not even think <laughs> not about it. Exactly. And that's exactly <laughs> what they're going to do. Next time you want to see Cano will be in a series in New York. Wells on deck. For our guys in the bottom of the ninth, we got the right guys coming up. Rios, Canerco, back to Seattle. And here comes Robin. Just to have a little talk with him. Wells has been swinging about well. He's two for four tonight. He's five for 11 in the series. They're in the bottom of the 12th in Cleveland, still tied at four. Detroit's had their problems in extra inning games. Well, the guy on the bump farm right now is a guy named Bonder, Jeremy Bonder. That's a blast from the past. Yes, it is. Just struck out Michael Bourne to lead off the bottom of the 12th. Jan Gomes is also homered in that game. He has two of the four RBIs. He drove in the fourth one. So two on, two out. Wells took that pitch nicely. Quick recognition. That evens account. One and one. Advantage goes back to Wells. Right. 
And the count evens at two. Take him right here. A full count with Granderson on deck. Just joining us, pitchers record are the starters, Sebastian and Santiago. He gone, he knew it. On the side, as we will stay right here and watch the 43 year old Hall of Famer, the greatest relief pitcher who ever lived, make his final appearance here in Chicago. Mariano Rivera. Listen to this ovation. And I'll tell you what, they're going to get one from, he's going to get one from Stoney and myself as well. Absolutely. You know, Steve, it's hard to say anybody is the greatest that ever lived in this thing because there's so many factors that come into it. But in my, for me, the guy who has the chance to be the greatest that ever lived has to have had the stage to do it in. And that's exactly what Rivera has because you're looking at postseason after postseason, big game after big game, whether it was the playoffs or the World Series. Mariano was always there. They gave him the ball, he always took it. Coming back after the knee injury he had, at the age he is, and having the kind of year he's had this year is one of the most remarkable feats in all of baseball. When you consider how tough it is to heal up, he's got 35 saves and 37 attempts. Seven walks, 39 strikeouts, and 40 in the third innings. He's only allowed a couple of home runs this year. And an ERA of 1-5-6. So this is 45th game. When you look at postseason, 42 saves, an ERA of .70 in the postseason, an 8-1 record, 96 postseason games. Now, the thing that you mentioned, Hawk, was that he's had the stage to do it. A lot of great pitchers haven't had that stage. Right. But being given the stage, he's come through just about each and every time. He did it. I mean, you know, it's just I remember him back in on July 4th, 1995. Making just a second start of his young career right here on that mound. And you know, his career high strikeouts is 11. And those were the 11 strikeouts he had on July 4th, 1995 against our Sox. He made 10 starts that year in his 19th appearance, and those were the last starts of his career. Yeah. He moved to the pen, and the rest, of course, is baseball history. But in the meantime, Two runs here. Send the Yankees home with a sweep. Well, as much as we like him, we'd rather have the two <laughs> runs right here. And here is Alex. Alex, one for three, a single and a run scored. And then to add to it, every hitter that went to the plate knew what was coming. They still know what's coming. They're not sure on what side of the plate, but you're pretty sure it's going to be a cutter. It's just absolutely, he's been an amazing, amazing. And he is probably against left handed hitters been the most effective right handed pitcher we've ever known. He just ate them alive. We knew what side of the plate was going on those guys. Yeah, well he cost a lot of teams a lot of money because he kept on breaking bat after bat after bat. They got a man there. 
makes the catch and foul ground, so one out. Well, the reason why Ichiro was able to make that catch, normally a right fielder wouldn't, but you know the Rivera's going to stay away with a cutter, especially when he gets ahead. And so you figure if a right-hander hits it, he's going to hit it down the line, and that's exactly what happened. So here's Pauly. Alex. Alex against Mariano. Now 0 for 16. Pauly is 5 for 12 with a homer off Mariano. And here's what Pauly had to say about Mariano. You, you know, again, like what he's going to do. You don't know exactly where he's going to do it. He can kind of pick one side or the other. Um, but uh, he's just calm. I mean, he's tough. Even if one guy gets to him or two guys get to him, he settles down and he gets out of it. You know, so it's it's tough to string hits together. Out two down. I have in the past actually pleaded with some of our managers that we've had here since Mariano came into the league and also as a leader. If you're going to pitch it, don't send a left hander up there. <laughs> he just killed him. Send a right hander up there, and they wouldn't listen. Beckham, one for three, a homer. And he has two RBIs, two of our three tonight. And that is foul back, just to Steve's right. That's the one away. Gordon's faced him three times. He's 0 for 3. That ball hit hard. In the gap. Yes. So Gordon will pull up with a double. And Adam Dunn is going to come out. And pinch hit. Gordon with two runs batted in, a home run, and now a double representing the tying run out at second base. And Adam Dunn striding to the plate. He has faced Mo four times. He's 0 for 4. One time, Adam. Give him a thrill. 25,707 in the house. Takes first pitch strike. That's what he's added to his repertoire as the one concession to the aging process is he'll throw a backdoor cutter nowadays. You see where Romine sets up? This ball moves at the last minute. It's right on the corner. And the 0-2 pitch. There's a base hit. Here comes Beckham. Here's the throw. Safe, and this game is tied at four. Yes. Yes. The third blown save of the year for Mariano Rivera as he tries to go right back outside. Only this time he catches too much of the plate. And Adam Dunn takes it by the diving Alex Rodriguez. No chance for Granderson. He doesn't have that kind of an arm. And the game is tied at four.
So here's Casper. There he goes. Safe. Jordan picks up the steal. Watch out, Casper. Gets a very good jump. And again, the throw is low. Cano tries a quick tag, but does not get him. Two out, nobody on. A double and a single. They almost walked right into that one. That one at 93 from the 43 year old. The one two pitch. Tie it up, we'll go to extra innings, 4-4. Beef jerky, feed your wild side. Anderson Reed comes into the ball game as Robin tries to buy an inning. Puts in his closer, who's 4 and 1, ERA 391. 52 strikeouts, 12 walks, and 48 in the third. And Mariano, for just the third time this year, fails to nail one down. Zavathia. Will not see his record go to 10 and 10. And Santiago will not lose this one. So Granderson, Nunez, first two hitters to face Addison here in the top of the 10th. For us, this will be the 18th extra inning game this year. It's pretty yeah. amazing, but with the pitching staff, that's what's made it. Well, in the first 17, we've won 5 0. That's not good. No. This will only be the eighth extra inning game for the Yankees. In the first seven, they have won three of them. Yeah, that's roped foul and count 0 and 2. We have played seven here at home and we've won two of the seven. They have played 
six extra inning games on the road and split them. Big on. Just kept on throwing that slider down and in until he finally got him. Last pitch, great pitch. There's Nunez. He is three for three, a single, a double, a homer, and a walk. Takes first pitch strike. Well, another good job by Nate Jones. And that has popped up. Tyler. Got a play. Two down. Nate probably for the last 20 appearances has been almost automatic. Slider's been better. He missed a few of them tonight. But he had the great slider to Wells when he had to. He froze him for a cold third. And made sure it was a one-run game heading into the bottom of the ninth. So here's Overbay. He's 0 for 4. Grounded out to Pauly, struck out a couple of times, and then hit into a 5 3 double play. Out and around that one. Now pass Mick Kelleher. Takes the ball, one and one. Bottom of the third at the big A, Texas leading the Angels four to two. Angels two run, two run homer by Mike Trout. Cincinnati beat Oakland six to five earlier. Two out, two balls, two strikes. If you're just joining us, Beckham, star for us tonight. Big on. And it'll really do it. We'll go to the bottom of the tenth. Gillespie to lead it off.
MLB.com at that is celebrating five years as your number one mobile app for live baseball. It's available for your iPhone, iPad, Android, and BlackBerry 10. AdBet delivers White Sox baseball with live audio, pitch tracking, stats, breaking news, and video highlights. So download AdBet now on the Apple App Store, Google Play, Kindle App Store, BlackBerry World, or text AdBet to 31826. Connor Gillespie to face Mariano Rivera. Connor over three tonight. Takes first pitch strike. That one's a little bit low. One and one to count. If he records one out, this will be the longest outing of the year. His longest outing, one inning to this point. Just off the corner, two and one. Chopper. You know, with that patented underneath gun of his. One out. So here's Tyler. Tyler twice is lined to left and struck out. Nothing one to count. Off day tomorrow, then Friday, the day night doubleheader, game one at one, game two at seven. That'll be against Minnesota, so make your plans to be with us. And the count 0 2. Top of the eighth in St. Louis, 9 4 Dodgers. Top of the eighth in Houston, 5 4 Astros over Boston. Just got a piece of it. A final from Kauffman Stadium. Kansas City beats Minnesota 5 2. Greg Holland picked up his 30th save in that ball game. They're in the top of the 14th now in Cleveland. Also tied at four. Good eye, close pitch. That cutter he throws on the inside corner, but it was off the plate. Four ten and zero for them. Four eight and zero for us as we are trying to sweep this series. We won game one eight to one behind them. Beautiful effort by Jose Quintana. And it's a tough foul. We won last night. Chris, they were really battling hard. Won that ball game three to two. Well, counting last year now, in the last nine games against the Yankees, we are seven and two. The ball is hurt, but foul. Atlanta continues to roll as they win their 13th in a row. They now have a 15 and a half game lead over the Nets. I like their chances of holding out. Kimbrell saved his 36th. Two down.
He goes upstairs with this. Tyler gets just a piece of it. But it sticks in the glove. And with that. Pittsburgh 4 2 victory over Miami. Looks like they're going to have a three game lead over the Cardinals. And a six and a half game lead over Cincinnati. Alexei fouls out of the way. That's the one away. Bottom of the fifth in Phoenix, Tampa Bay and the D backs tied at four. Tampa Bay wins that game. And the Dodgers, who are leading nine, four, eighth inning in St. Louis, that could be a six game lead for the Dodgers. There's a chopper two hopper. That didn't take long. One, two, three. Now we'll go to the 11th. Season long, Jack Link's beef jerky. Feed your wild side. A 4-4 tie here in the top of the 11th inning for the Yankees. Austin Romine will lead it off. He is 0 for 3, a couple of strikeouts, a line out the center, and a walk. Field straight up, spread out. Ball one for the 24 year old catcher. That Houston Boston game now, bottom of the eighth with the Astros leading 5 4. 2 0 the count. Outfield a little deeper than they normally play. Come back and get him. No walks. Three and zero. Oh. Warren throwing in the bullpen. Now the question is, do they pinch run for Romine? And the answer is yes, they do. Jason Nix. Now they're back to the top of the order. Gardner with each row on deck. 
Gardner on the first pitch of the ball game. Had a drag bunt past Santiago. And then Soriano, the next hitter, had a two run homer. So Gillespie and on the grass. And the Tigers have just taken a 6 4 lead, top of the 14th inning in Cleveland. Prince Fielder with a two run double. Gardner showed butt, pulled the bat back. That's five straight bad ones from Addison. Straight back. That time he dropped the head of the bat and he caught a break because that could have just as easily have popped straight up. It's a lot different when you're trying to sacrifice than it is when you're bunting for a hit. Watch the head of the bat as it drops down, and when it does that, you have to pop the ball straight up. He got six of them this year. Nick's 11 straight steals. He is yet to be caught. There he goes. And that's a broken bat. That's going to be trouble. They're going to get him a second. Well, Nick's fell down. If he doesn't fall down, he can get to second base. Great composure on the part of Gordon Beckham as he was able to. Recognize the fact that there was still a force out. What a break that was. It's a hit and run. Gordon can't get to it. Rios can't get to it. But then Gordon, seeing Nick's fall down, he's got to play right there. And look at the job by Alexi being a first baseman. So here's Ichiro. He's been to the plate one time and had a solid single in the right field. It's pinch hitting. Well, no, he went in for defense for Soriano. Alfield swung around to the left, gap out there in right center. Rios way over in the right center. As Gardner, 18 for 25 and stolen bases. Good speed at first. He faked as if to go, realized he could not get much of a jump as Addison using a slide step, so he stopped. There he goes. Pitch out. Safe. On a pitch out, many times, if you don't use a slide step, a good base runner is going to get you, and Addison did not use a slide step. So it's a good throw. It's just not there in time. Hitro has faced Addison four times, has two hits. And he's got a 2 1 count. 4 10 and 0 for the Yankees, 4 8 0 for our guys. This hour, 18th extra inning game this year. That ball hit hard, but the is there. Gardner will tag. You're moving to third, and that is out number two. So here's Rodriguez. He's one for four. It's 
First time Rodriguez has faced Addison. Pretty good pitch, and Tyler Flowers looks back at Greg Gibson and says, Where was that? He wants it low and away, he gets it low and away. Doesn't get too much better than that. And there's a chop to Hopper. Corner throws him out, and that'll retire the side. Well, the bottom of the 11. The odds are the lead at all. For the 21st time. He's given up eight home runs this year in 51 and a third innings. So we've got Nick's at third. We've got Stewart behind the plate. And everybody else stays the same. So the 25 year old right hander out of New Bern, North Carolina. Six one, two hundred pounds. Graduated from the University of North Carolina with a degree in business administration. And he was the first. Of the Yankee organization's 2009 draft class to appear in the major leagues. North Carolina, he was pretty good. He was 32 and 4. That's pretty good. Won his first 19 games. So here we go. Diaza. Corners in close. Now feels slightly to the left. Nice gap out there in right center if he can find it. And he takes first pitch strike right at the top of the zone. Alejandro, one for four, a single, and a run scored. That was back in the seventh inning. Very quickly, the count nothing and two. Top of the ninth in St. Louis, nine four Dodgers. Texas still leading Angels 4 2, bottom of the fourth at the Big A. Breaking ball down and in. Not even close. 
But he swings at it and that's out number one. So here's Rios. Alex one for four, a single. Takes low ball one. Gardner a couple of steps into right center field. And Granderson well off the line and left. Last home run for Alex was July 20th against the Braves. And that came with the bases loaded. Two and one to count. And that evens it. Canerco on deck. Dylan Axelrod most likely will come on. Two innings is it for Addison. Slows him up. And that's going to be a base hit. Warren does a terrific job of getting the glove down and stopping that ball on its way out to center field. He hit off the outside of the glove and he says that he's okay. This is a rocket right back to him. And he's very fortunate that it hit the outside of the glove and not the wrist or the pitching hand. So here's Polly. Polly has swung the bat well tonight. Only coming up with one hit. That was a double, an RBI double in the seventh inning. Gardner over towards Ichiro. Looked like Alex started to turn. But realizing that Warren was coming to first, went back. He's had a great year running this year. Just a short lead. Long set. Polly has faced Warren one time, and he took him deep. Alex 25 stolen bases have been caught six times. Hit that gap out there in left center. There he goes. And the ball. Low throw. So he picks up his 26th. Now pick him up, Paulie. Every one of the Yankee catchers tonight and Stewart's in for his first inning but everyone has bounced the ball to second base. And Alex. Getting there would have been out had that throw stayed in the air. Now the outfield has to come in a lot closer than they were when Alex was at first base. Checks it up, takes a strike. Oh, and two the count. The great arm is in right field.
Got him. Two down. Good hard slider low and away, and let's see if they pitch to Beckham. They're not going to pitch to Beckham. They're going to take their chances with Jordan Danks, who came in to pinch run for Adam Dunn, whose base hit tied it up. I don't want any part of Gordon Beckham here. He's been swinging the bat very well this series. Gordon has been our hero tonight, a homer. And with two out, nobody on against Rivera, doubled in the right center field and then scored on that single by Adam. So Gordon, two for four with that homer double. Two runs scored. Two knocked in, so he's been involved in all four of our tallies. This is just his second intentional walk of the year. All right, Jordan, come on, buddy, one time. Rothschild coming out. Well, I certainly don't blame him for not pitching to Gordon. <laughs> no. And now Larry comes out to give Warren the scouting report on Jordan Danks. Gordon swinging a bat better than anybody on the club. He's made good solid contact to all fields for the better part. Well, actually, since he's come back off the DL. Indians have scored a run, still trailing 6 5, two out, man on second. Bottom of the 14th. Jordan. Swings at a very bad pitch. And that's way outside. Jordan lately. Anything down and off speed, he's been chasing. Got an off-speed pitch. Good one to hit. It was up. Had plenty of the plate. And out in front. Two on, two out. One and two the count. We're into the 12th.
season long. Jack Link's Beef Jerky, feed your wild side. Dylan Axelrod comes into the game. He's 3-8. and eight. His ERA, 522. He's on for the 23rd time. The fifth time out of the bullpen. He's going to go right through the middle of this Yankee order. And try to hold him down and turn it over to the offense. He's got his work cut out for him. Robinson Cano to lead it off. He'll be followed by Vernon Wells and then Granderson. 4 10 and 0 for the Yankees, 4 9 and 0 for our Sox here in the 12th as we lead the major leagues in extra inning games. As I mentioned, this is our 18th. Cano has faced X three times and has one hit. Clips the breaking ball up there and grabs the strike. Dodgers now leading St. Louis 13 to 4, top of the ninth inning. So it looks like the Dodgers are going to have themselves a six game lead if Arizona loses that game, but they have just jumped out to a 7 4 lead. Over Tampa Bay, that game in the top of the sixth. One and one to count. Looked like Cano thought about for a second taking one for the club and then thought better of it as he didn't want an ankle burger for his efforts. No, the Tigers have just defeated Cleveland 6 5 and 14. So the Tigers now with a six game lead. And they pick up their 11th straight win. Two run double by Prince Fielder. One two pitch. That ball hit deep. Yankees lead at 5 4. Someone 21 given up by Dylan Axelrod. And the 22nd that Cano has hit is 71st driven in. What a money player he is. And what a money player he's going to be when he signs his next contract. Ford home run replay looked like an off speed pitch. It's out of way. And he just crushes it. There's Wells. He's two for five tonight. That was Robinson's first home run since July 10th. They just stopped pitching to him. Now with that ball, get fouled. Get fouled. It will. Now with Rodriguez back in the lineup. Granderson playing. Soriano. Soriano may be just a very big pickup for these guys. A very big pickup. I think to help balance out their lineup, he was an essential pickup because there weren't a whole lot of right-handed hitters around that could give you what Soriano can give you. Plus, he's actually become a good left fielder, which is something he yeah. never was. There's a strike in the count one and two. For our guys in the bottom of the 12th, it'll be the lower third of the order. Gordon's got him. And that is out number one. So here's Granderson. Curtis 0 for 4 with the base on balls.
Drops curveball on the count of 1 2. Five eleven and zero for New York. Four nine and zero for our guys. Well, it's a good thing that the appeal to Alan Porter didn't wind up with a strike, because that ball hopped into the seats, and Granderson would have been at first. We'll take a look at it. Oh, he didn't swing. It was a good call by Alan Porter on the appeal. Two down. Kept that ball down and in, and he swung over the top. Nunez had a good night. Hard double, home run, a walk, hard single. Three for four. Two and oh. Three and nothing. So here's Overbay. Three strikeouts and two ground outs. Boston has come back to take a 7 5 lead. And he's going to steal second. And Ramirez did a terrific job because that ball looked like it was headed for center field. But Alexi on the one hopper able to keep it out of center field. That breaking ball down and in. Boston was trailing. Five to two. Then five to four. And then Red Sox scored three in the top of the ninth to lead it seven to five. Yanks that one foul. Take him right here, Axe. Let's get our bats going. Took something off, but the home run by Robinson Cano is 22nd. We'll go to the bottom of the 12th trailing, 5-4.
here going to the bottom of the 12th inning. Casper Wells, Connor Gillespie, and Tyler Flowers, the scheduled hitters. And if you miss it earlier, Mariano Rivera with two outs and nobody on. Looking for save number 36. Gave up a double to Beckham. A single to Dunn. And that tied the score in the bottom of the ninth inning. Oh, and won the count to Casper was 0 for 4. And that Red Sox game is over. They win it 7-5. Twenty one to count. And Tampa Bay after six and Phoenix still tra trailing the D back seven four. One and two the count. Yes, good take off the outside corner. That's one of those you can't hit. You take it. It's not a strike, but it was tantalizing enough. And that got him. Third strikeout of the night for Casper. This is a breaking ball that he tried to get away. It actually wound up backing up. And occasionally you'll hear of a pitcher who can throw a backup slider by design. They're terribly effective, but very few guys can do it. He Down didn't try one to do hand. It. Yeah, he didn't try to do it, but it worked. That's a four strikeout for Warren. In an inning and a third. So here's Gillespie. He's 0 for 4 tonight. Got it out three times to Cano. Off day tomorrow, double header on Friday. Split double header. One o'clock start time for the first game. Seven o'clock for game two. Two and one. Top of the fifth in Anaheim, still 4 2 Texas. Good motion on that one. Had him completely off balance. Full count. Ball four base hit. Off the end of the bat. Off speed. Two down. And here comes Flowers. Tyler. Yeah, that hadn't happened to Rivera very often. I wouldn't think so. Plus, we did see him go two innings, which he's not done all year long. Come on, Tyler. Tyler twice has lined to left field and twice has struck out. And he takes strike one.
We are down to our last bullet. Off the glove. And he's going to beat it out for the hit. There's an example of a ball that a pitcher thinks is coming back to him a lot more quickly than it does. So he puts up the glove, actually shields himself, and doesn't make the play. This is a very easy play, but he anticipates it being a little harder than it was. And the game is still alive. Still alive for Alexei. Alexei is two for five tonight. He has not homered. He has one homer. Has not homered since the second game of the season. How about a little Kismet? going to be a base hit. The tie is going to make the turn. He's going to go into third. Runners at the corners. Two out. And the are coming to the plate. This one drifts inside and even at 95. Winds up in the outfield. So bring Clay Rothschild out one more time. And the strange scenario here is they've been working Diazza down and in. Problem with doing that is it's pretty easy to throw a wild pitch and Warren has thrown three wild pitches this year. Now Chris Stewart. Very well aware of that. There should be. They were also talking about what they're going to do if Ramirez takes off. As far as who's going to get the throw, if he is going to throw it. And if he does, will they take it at the bag or come across? He's got a real short lead. Come on, Alejandro. We play this long. We play a little longer. Let's get this thing tied up. 5 11 and 0 for them, 4 11 and 0 for us. Kind of surprised Gardner is not overly deep in center field. That ball hit. He's not going to get that one. In fact, Alexi, here he comes. And the Sox win it 6 to 5. Yes! Driving in two, winning the ball game, driving in runs 47 and 48. Gardner was not deep. When you can live with a single, but you can't live with a double, and it comes back to burn him. You said it right on cue. Go to the Sox in a very dramatic sweep of the Yankees. We win the opener 8 to 1. Win last night. 3 to 2. And Diazza with a two out, two run double. Our GMC player of the game. Alejandro just gets one out over the plate, thigh high, and drills it. You can see where Gardner is. Even if he's in straightaway center, he's got no chance to get this one. Ramirez scoring easily. That's the ball game. 
<laughs> Look at Alexi. <laughs> All right, Sox one at six five, the sweep. So for my partner Steve Stone, our director Jim Angio, our producer Todd Benjaminson, our associate producer Dave Ross, our technical manager Mark Harper, the executive producer Jim Corno Jr., also for the mayor, me Joe Groove, and Dave Chellin, Joe Paul's back, Frank Leone, Doug Bullard, and Sound. This is a Hawk. So long, everybody. You can watch the Chicago White Sox baseball and Comcast Sportsnet coming up next. The Orland Park Nissan Post Game Show with Chuck and Bill.